Hello, my little goblins are back out again, and this time we're going to be talking about the Fusion XZ Festival, and this is going to be very important for you guys to know. There's going to be five decks I show you guys, and all these decks are going to be insanely good, stellar for the event. Uh, first one is going to be no surprise. It's going to be Branded. Branded is pretty much full, exactly full power. The only nerf they did was Albion to one, which does hurt a little. I'm not going to lie. But Albion to one, you can still do a lot of disgusting things. Instead, we're going to play playing two Lebellions. Usually, you normally play one. But, yeah, we, we, we got to make up for not having uh, that card. We are playing Super Poly, and I would recommend maybe you play three. I'm playing two for right now. Maybe you play three for later. But, yeah, this is, really, this is going to be a very, very powerful deck in the format. If you have two Mercuriers, I recommend playing two to three instead of one. You could play one. Uh, you could also be playing this deck with Shadal. Um, but I believe, yeah, they hit Winda. So you can't play with Winda, so maybe don't play with Shadal. So, yeah. So just play regular Branded Despia, and you're going to be fine. So if you have these cards, it's really good on you. Uh, if you don't, we got four other decks we're going to be looking at. I'm sure you got at least one of these decks. And if you don't, we could talk about budget options for you. I do recommend playing the Kaiju though, because I think they're going to be important for some of the other decks we talk about. So, um, yeah, first deck. Let me know in the comments um, what you think about the first deck already. Pretty gross. Let's get to the second. Everyone's favorite deck from Ladder, Makonko. You guys like playing against this deck, right? Well, guess what? It's practically full power in this event. I'm going to say not 100% full power. So this deck did get hit. So Onahime is at two, which you might be like, who cares? They did ban out the 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 um, double-edged sword. So the OTKs are going to be a little, like a little smidge harder. Um, but they didn't hit any of the Kaiju cards. So if you do play Kaiju Slumber, this is another way of OTKing super easily. The way you would do it would probably be normal summoning a monster on an empty board. You Kaiju Slumber summon two uh, cards and then boom, you get to do your full combo if you have the equips. And summon three monsters. Boom, boom, boom. Attack, attack, attack. Or two monsters with Axe of Fools. And that should be more than enough uh, damage. Uh, the extra deck could be anything. Usually we play Pot of Extrav. Extrav and Pot of Pete are banned for the event. So you will not be able to take advantage of that. So that is important. That's another nerf for this deck. But other than that, you're playing a bunch of Kaijus and you're OTKing super easy. It's going to be a fantastic deck to climb and get your points quick. Now we got to ask Konami who is smoking the pipe. Because they let this deck go through. You're able to play FTK Utopia in this event so <laughs> if you guys have the utopia cards like i do because i like utopia as a deck i normally don't play ftk but you can completely play this ftk actually you know what i'm kind of curious on did they ban the ddd card uh they did actually ban the ddd card so they banned the way of locking your opponent out with the uh, ddd card but you're just gonna be play utopia and you're just going to OTK them. If you guys don't know how to OTK with this deck, it's very, very simple. You get into, you go into co basic combo to go into Dragonair. Dragonair is going to first summon out uh, Draglubion. Draglubion is going to summon out Numeron Dragon. Numeron Dragon is going to activate its effect to gain 9,000 attack or 13,000 attack. I forget which one. And then afterwards, uh, on your opponent's turn, uh, upkeep or the standby phase you're going to activate or, or draw phase even you're going to activate a dra dragonier effect to summon number 43 and then you're also going to use mystic walk or destruct potion and since you gain uh, 13,000 life points right this card is going to burn your opponent for 13,000 and it is a very common FTK done with bots so it's very funny to me that they let this go through because this is a very common bot deck. So uh, good job, Konami. Pretty neato. 
Uh, but yeah, this is a, I would say this is a good list. The reason why I say it's a good list is because if you can't do the FTK combo, let's say you didn't open Mystic Walk or Distract Potion, you can still set up a pretty reasonable board with like a negate or two. So, so not too bad. Alrighty, for deck number four, we have Galaxy Eyes. I mean, this had to be coming, right? I did a Galaxy Eyes profile not that long ago. Uh, you know, I've been liking this deck. I've been liking Galaxy Eyes in general. I think this deck is going to be really decent in this event. Two reasons. If you go first, you're going to be able to Galaxy 100, see what your opponent's playing. If they're playing number cards, right, you're going to start to be able to steal their number cards, which is really funny. Because imagine you see that they're playing Baguska, you set up your board, and then on your opponent's turn, you can even steal their Baguska, summon it into the field, and now they have to deal with the Baguska. And if they don't have a Kaiju, guess what? You just soloed their turn, and then it's your turn, Baguska dies, and then you just kill them. You OTK them. Um, other fun things that we can do with this deck, we're playing the Time Stop. If you guys don't want to play Time Stop, you don't have to. Play more. You can play more of a going second variant. Uh, but the Time Stop variant works very, very well because uh, I don't know if people are going to play as many Kaijus. I mean, if, if Makanko is really popular in this event, and a lot of people end up playing it, then maybe take out Time Stop and Durandal, and you guys can look at maybe of a more uh, going second variant of this deck. But I do think this going uh, first strategy is going to be very strong. Like, even if you end up not doing the Durandal play and you just decide to go for the regular, like, uh, level 8 axis, like, setup, uh, it's going to be very, very powerful, and it's going to be very annoying for your opponent to deal with. Plus, we play a good amount of hand traps in this deck, so... Can't really hate it. Overall, I think it's going to be a very solid pick for you. And it's going to probably be one of the more based options you can do. Let's be real. Hello, we're here with deck number five, and this is Generator. Uh, we are still playing Diviner, even if we can't go into Barone, because I think Diviner sending Treyas to the graveyard with a boss stage available is going to be a very powerful combo regardless. Uh, it's going to give you draws. It's going to give you pops. It's going to give you a lot of good things that you're going to like. Um, World Legacy Monstrosity is still going to lead you into some pretty disgusting plays. You can still double hand rip with this deck going into Utopic Draco Future. Or you can just go into Lavatine, the generator boss of uh, Shadows. Um, that's going to be a very powerful option. We've seen how powerful this card is in the past. Um, and I think in this event where things are definitely, even though things are a lot, a lot of high power things, there's still going to be a lot of low power things. So I, I think this deck is going to be really solid. This this event is nothing going to be like nothing compared to the last event. The, the King of Beasts or whatever, the garbage event that they had that no one liked. This event is going to be crazy. Like there's going to be a lot more high powered decks. The only problem is I don't know if everyone's going to have the cards to like really play these high powered decks. Uh, but we are going to talk about uh, some other lower power decks. And I'm not even going to give you deck lists because they're like... These decks are kind of like cringe to me personally. Uh, I mean, these all these decks are a little cringe, but um, other decks they left out is Crooked Cook, the Crooked Cook combo with Exodia, full power. Like this deck's full power, but the problem is if people are playing Makanko, this deck gets absolutely annihilated because it just kaiju it. So like that deck, this deck is pretty cheap. I'm not gonna lie. But it also is going to take you forever to get your points. So I prefer that you guys play something that's going to get your points quicker. You could play the loner decks. But I'm going to be real. The loner decks kind of big stinker this, this time around. The loner decks compared to the power level of what you can actually make in this event. Because of how bad the bands were. Uh, are actually crazy. Like the, these decks are like insane power level. Like, you're, it's, you're not going to be able to distinguish this from ranked. Uh, and I really want to make sure you guys know that because I don't want you guys getting in here and being upset or disappointed. Uh, but you're going to be able to do a lot of powerful things here, um, even, with just, even with this deck. Um, like, this deck, I would say, is maybe... It's going to be a very strong deck, but I think it's on the almost on the lower scale of the ones I just showed you. And I still think this deck is way better than the ones they give you by a lot. Whereas the the reason why I didn't do a deck profile for the Beast of King, what that the Beast King, whatever, that the Beast Festival event, right? The reason I didn't do that 
is because I thought that that event, you could have just played the loner deck and you're fine. Like, if you just played, like, the Fire King loner deck, you're fine. You're Gucci. You didn't have to play. I, I personally played uh, Crystal Beast for that event because I thought that was a really good deck. But you didn't have to play Crystal Beast. You, you could have just played anything because uh, they, they made every deck garbage. <laughs> This event, on the other hand, they made a lot of decks, like, slide by. Funny enough, Pearly, you would have thought Pearly would have been great this event, but they hit Noir. So the only way Pearly is going to be able to be played in this event is if you play a Pearly, but, like, a going second Pearly strategy, where you go off of happiness and you try to OTK them off happiness. So, like, it's, it's kind of weird, but, like, in a good way. Because I kind of like it. I think it's going to be fun. Uh, you're definitely gonna if you play any of the decks I told you to play, you're gonna cry. You're gonna get your points so fast. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what uh, decks you want to see next. Uh, I have some decks in the pipeline, but again, if you guys give me some good information, maybe I can move things around and make something sooner. All right, goodbye.